Now, right now I'm about to go swap my boy Pedro. He wanted to try out my 50 millimeter Elcan F2 copy from Light Lens Lab, and I wanted to test out his 28 millimeter Elmerit V4 ASPH from Leica um, because I have myself a copy of the 28 millimeter F2.8 color scope bar from Voigtlander that I think is a very, very good copy. And I'm curious to see how they perform against each other because I've heard a lot of crazy things on the internet. Right now I am recording everything on this video is going to be from this iPhone 15. Um, just the regular version. These M series lenses from Moment using their Moment case. The 58 millimeter and the 18 millimeter lenses are the ones I'm going to use. Be recording all the audio on this MKE 200 from Sennheiser. If you don't like the quality, I don't know what to tell you at this point. <sighs> Front facing camera. Also, the gear I'm using today I have on a Dom key bag, like an M10R. Um, all my regular knickknacks and stuff like that. I think I've talked about it before, but uh, I have a few new things that are on my keychain. Um, including this carabiner, but I'm carrying around this Gerber shard now. This is now the multi-tool that I've been carrying around. Um, and then I purchased these right here, these little uh, Jaybird earbuds. These have like really long battery life. Sounds decent, but I lose, or not lose, but I misplace a lot of times when I'm traveling back and forth my AirPods, and I usually I leave them at home. So now these hook onto my keychain. Very good EDC thinking for someone like me who just has so much shit, you sometimes you forget it because you don't use it that often. The bokeh on this looks crazy though. Yeah. I'm um, here somewhere downtown meeting my buddy Alex. Uh, I've already taken a couple photos with the color scope bar and the uh, Elmerit and um, we're gonna see what it looks like from a field perspective one of the things that I'm going to immediately say about these lenses is they both have very loose uh, loose uh, focusing rings both have tabs a very very nice filling uh, very very quick to focus the Leica um, aperture ring I, it is mushy and very it's it's just different they're both easy to move both very like soft aperture rings so that makes sense not like super hard clicks but there's more detent and more feedback from the Voigtlander the Leica I've already twice this would have been my third time fucked up and accidentally while focusing somehow or handling it mess up my aperture so kind of bugs but you pay for the optics really What was that? Meow. Hey, what are you doing? Hmm? Here at Half Price Books, my wife's a bookworm, and so we're getting some stuff, taking photos like a lot of 
layer shapes and stuff, which is I think what 28 millimeters best with is layers. So I've trying to been doing that over the past couple of days to, uh, I guess, just give an example of the way things are. I'm shooting everything randomly, anywhere from f2.8 wide open, which I'll tell you what those are, and then depending on situation, anywhere from f4 to f11, f16. Um, and yeah, I mean. Uh, I'm able to tell which one is the 28 Elmerit versus the 28 color scope bar because the 28 Elmerit is 6 bit encoded. And so there's not going to be any mix up there. Uh, just right off the bat, I could tell you we're going to have a real conversation about build quality and about feel because the color scope bar feels better to use, even though, you know, we're trained to think that the Voigtlander would be worse in build quality. Hey, what's up? It's a rainy day today. This whole week, pretty good. Not too much for testing out flares and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, I can already tell right now that Elmer handles flare okay. The color scope bar does literally the same. Rice and beans. Beans and rice. All right, so final thoughts, having to record this for the fourth time now. Moment team, by the way, I use the Moment app for recording all of my mobile stuff because I enjoy Moment Log. Uh, whether it was on my iPhone 13 mini, even now on my regular iPhone 15, it is lacking in one area, and that is the ability to actually do what it's supposed to do, which is capture things successfully and save them to my phone. I keep getting errors talking about capture issues and not able to save stuff to reach out to support, but at this point, what does it matter with me reaching out more or again for an issue that is continuously happening on every single phone that I have. But when it comes to the lens, let's go ahead and run through exactly uh, what's going on. I'll run through basically some of the highlights of things that I saw that were important, that were different, as well as the same. When it comes to the same, sharpness is gonna be very identical amongst both. People say that the 28 Elmer is the sharpest lens they've ever used. Well, the uh, color scope bar is probably just as sharp. Honestly, there were times where I thought it was sharper and times where I thought that the V1 ASPH Elmer was sharper, but you know what, basically it's a wash. I wouldn't put too much into what you hear about sharpness. They're both gonna be just fine. And even more than that, they're both going to exceed the expectation of many other options you have out there. Next, let's get to distortion. They are both great at handling distortion whenever you're far away from a subject, but just like any other uh, wide angle-ish lens, um, once you get straight lines to the edges of your frame, you're going to have some distortion. Now the Leica handles distortion better than the color scope bar. Remember, in this whole thing, I didn't adjust vignetting, I didn't adjust distortion, I didn't adjust chromatic aberration, any of that stuff. I left it as is and only edited with colors. And uh, yeah, the Leica just handles it better. Is it really, really bad? No. Should you be shooting portraits on either of these? You can, but then again, you know what the risk is whenever it comes to distortion, uh, wide angle lenses and how it perceives face and straight lines and stuff, that's just gonna happen. Again, if you're far away, uh, landscape architecture, you're gonna do fine. But if you're close to something with lines on the edge, distortion is gonna be heavier on the color scope bar. Whenever it comes to vignetting, very simple. I like the vignetting on the color scope bar better period. Leica's is fine. I guess the color shift is more of a green in the area around the corners where it vignettes. It's darker. There's a loss of exposure. And to some people, they like that, especially people that shoot film. But I'm viewing this on um, digital. And the only thing you have on the color scope bar is a little bit of magenta color shift, which can be corrected across the frame, but you're not really losing any light in the corners. It's not a change in exposure. I like that better. I'd rather just be able to tune down the magenta a little bit across the frame and be fine than anything that has to do with uh, darkening and having to edit and post to bring that light up. It never looks good, never looks natural. Uh, whenever it comes to color, the, they're pretty much the same, a little bit more on the magenta side from the color scope bar, but again, you can edit and be fine with that. Next we have blooming. Wasn't expecting to see this, but uh, there is a lot more blooming whenever it comes from light sources on the Elmerit than you have on the color scope bar. Point blank period color scope bar is a lot more uh, controlled whenever it comes to that. Hardly any blooming whatsoever. Some people may like that. So on the Elmerit ASPH, um, you know, you're going to have that. 
and on uh, the color scope bar you're not. Now we're coming into chromatic aberration, the uh, fringing, etc. that was on the Elmerit. Now listen, if it's gonna happen between one of the two, it's gonna happen way more on the Elmerit. You can expect it on the Elmerit. And the color scope bar is actually really well controlled. The thing why I don't lean into this or care about it too much is you can edit this in post and even more, unless you're pixel peeping, you're not gonna see it. The Elmerit isn't just like completely consumed by nothing but fringing, by nothing but chromatic aberration, but it is there. The color scope bar is just a cleaner image. And again, with it being sharper, some people may see this is better, but at the end of the day, you can just fix it in post. I can't say that enough. You could just fix it in post. This just seems like a wash to me as well. All in all, they're pretty even. Uh, some benefits for the Leica, some benefits for the color scope bar from Voigtlander. And so I would just have to say that they're a wash. Now this is really good for the color scope bar people because you're thinking, oh, okay, you know, for 600 or so dollars, 500 whenever it's on sale, I can get a lens that is anywhere from four to eight times the price of this one lens and it has similar output. And to a lot of people, they may be thinking, okay, I'll just take the bargain version and just deal with the build quality, deal with all these things. But the key factor for me whenever it comes to this and choosing which one I like better is the fact that I don't like the build quality of the Elmer. I don't like that aperture ring. About four or five times I was focusing and it turns out I ended up adjusting the aperture ring on accident. It is so soft in the aperture clicks that I did not know. I, there was no audible uh, feedback. So I did not know that that was happening, that things were moving. I don't like that personally. Some of you may like that softness, but I don't. The Voigtlander, I feel feels better in the focusing. It is a little bit lighter instead of a little bit more resisted like on the Leica. I don't like that for wide angle lenses. And even more when it comes to the aperture ring, there are hard detents. Um, it's not very audible. It's not very like stuck kind of click, but it is very smooth, hard to tense to where you can know where you're at. And you know if you move the aperture ring. I prefer that. I think that's a great build by them. Overall build quality and use, I am gonna give it to Voigtlander and that's the biggest thing for me whenever it comes to these two lenses. That was the big one that stood out. Nothing else, cause optically they're even, but whenever it comes to build quality, 100% has to go to the Voigtlander. So all in all, at the very end of this, it just needs to be said, listen, you're gonna buy whatever you wanna buy. But I wanna talk about how people always say the words, well, buy once, cry once, because you should always buy the pricier first party ones because it's always gonna be great. It's always gonna be better. That is not always the case, and this is one of them. Listen, the ASPH 28 Elmerits, I think this is the V1 from Leica, is a great lens, fantastic lens. So many people talk about how this is the sharpest lens they've ever used, and for some people, I will say that's true. But the issue I have is that there's no discernible increase in sharpness, even when zoomed into 300%, which, why would you do that? Uh, there's no discern better uh, you know, sharpness or uh, micro contrast at all unless you're purposely moving um, the goalposts in order to have that for the Leica compared to this color scope bar. And that's what matters more to me. And then you have the idea of the build quality feeling better. And again, let's go to this buy once, try, uh, buy once, cry once thing. I'm fine with buying something that's budget when it's four to eight times cheaper than the main one. This is not like, hey, the color scope bar is 600 and the Elmerit, the, the ASPH is $1,000 brand new. This isn't that. And so whenever it comes to those two things, especially with the fact that I don't trust that aperture ring on the Leica long term because of the way that it feels, um, you know, I, I would definitely say the color scope bar wins in this. And it's not because, well, the Leica is better in all these ways, but it's just, but the color scope bar is close behind. The color scope bar is actually on par with sharpness. It's above it, in, in my opinion, build quality and feel. It is better, in my opinion, in vetting, uh, in vignetting. It is better, in my opinion, um, than the Leica in the uh, fringing chromatic aberration. It is better in more ways than the Leica is better than the Voigtlander. And at the end of the day, that's what matters to me. Now, it also needs to be said that we have this weird idea that just because something's a third party lens and it's not from America or Germany or someplace in the UK, that it must be a crap item. People wanna talk about, well, Leicas are handmade in Germany and that's why they're so good. Okay, well, Light Lens Lab hand makes their own lenses, but we want to still knock it as Chinese crap. And that's the issue that we have. We don't realize the history of manufacturing and, and large processing and the fact that a lot of times we associate Ch China with cheap Chinese crap because we bought products that American companies outsourced to China and purchased the materials for and had them build in large quantities with less materials in order so they could increase their product. There is no cause or there's no effect without a cause. 
And so don't be afraid to purchase things like these Voigtlanders. Don't be afraid to purchase things like these Viltrox lenses, these TT Artisans lenses, these Rokinon and Sam Ying lenses, these Sigma lenses. There are third party companies that have already proven to be worth their weight and you should lean into that. It's better for you, it's better for everyone. Not only is it better for consumers, it's better for the manufacturers because it lights a fire under their tail and that's whenever we have ingenuity. Now one thing I will say about this Voigtlander and why I think it's gonna do great and this may sound crazy to some people but there are so many people that are going to be like right on the same page as me it's black on the front the the ring on the front is not chrome and listen that looks cheap and tacky to me and i know there's a lot of people that think that and also that does uh create more flare because there's light bouncing up of that can hit the sensor through the lens so long story short I am just a, I, I love the way the uh, color scope bar looks. It's smaller than the Elmerit um, as well. It is a nice pancake lens. It's got, it's black on the front. It's very discreet, low profile. I like the coloring, but even more, it handles better. Optically, it might be a little bit better and the price is better. So one's better than the other and it's 100% the color scope bar. With all this being said, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. Remember to take it light, but take it. Have a good one.